Please remain standing for our scripture reading this morning. It comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Now, last week, I had an opening joke. It didn't go over so well. I'm going to try again. This gentleman was walking down the street, comes in front of the, the, the state hospital there, and there's a big wooden fence in the front of it. And as he passes by, all he can hear is, is the, these folks on the other side of the fence uh, chanting together, 13, 13, 13. And he's just totally curious by this. Why in the world are all these people on the other side of the fence chanting 13, 13, 13? And the he, he, fence is too tall for him to look over, but it, it was just getting too much for him. The temptation was just too much for him. So he, he found a hole in the fence, and he put his eye up to try to figure out what in the world was going on. And all of a sudden, this finger comes through and pokes him in the eye, and they start going, 14, 14, 14. <laughs> Dum dum. That tested well with my test market folks. I did this earlier with. So now we can pray. Lord God, speak to our hearts this day. Not only through the message of this sermon, but the time of holy communion that we share that follows. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the final uh, uh, sermon in this series that we've been talking about sin and temptation and, and how God provides a, a way out for us. Uh, next week, we'll get into uh, Palm Sunday, focus on the triumphal entry. The weekend after that is Easter Sunday. What a great time in the life of the church. There are a couple of times during the year that, that your neighbors and your friends and your family members who do not go to church are more likely to say yes to an invitation to church, and that is Christmas Eve and Easter. And so I want to encourage you, as we're getting closer to Easter, to don't be afraid to extend that invitation to your friends, to your neighbors, and say, hey, why don't you come join us on Easter Sunday? We've got a great service. We've got a so-so preacher, uh, but I'm sure it'll be decent, you know, just something like that. Just extend the invitation and invite them to be a part of that. I really hope that you will do that. As we've been looking at this uh, sermon series, and we, as we kind of come to a cl close of the sermon series, I, I wanted to kind of remind us of some of the things that we've been talking about. We've talked about uh, our key verse, which has been this uh, 13th verse that, uh, that was read for us. I, wanna, I want us to read this together again, all at the same time. Here we go. No temptation has overtaken you, Accept what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Remember how we talked about temptation is, is anything that promises us satisfaction at the cost of obedience to God. Anything that promises, promises us uh, uh, some sense of satisfaction, uh, our life is going to be better, we're going to feel better, we're going to get a thrill or a buzz or whatever it may be, whatever that is that is in front of us, that, that, that offers itself to us, but it does so at a cost to us. And that is at a cost of being obedient, faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Anything in front of us that way is what we call a temptation. Throughout this series, we talked about the importance of the Holy Spirit. Last week, especially, we talked about that. How the Holy Spirit is that which empowers us, God's Spirit, empowering us to say yes to the right things and no to the wrong things uh, that we can't overcome, we can't be victorious without the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, 
working through us how we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we especially, uh, I've especially tried to drive home this point about God's faithfulness to us in all of this. That, that even when we do give in to temptation, even when we do struggle with sin and, and we wrestle with it and sometimes we, we just dive right into it, even then, God's grace is big enough, God's forgiveness is still extended to us, that God's posture towards us is always one of open arms, ready to receive us back in our lives. And then last week, I introduced you to that that idea, that thought, that whatever we feed grows, and whatever we starve dies. And that's the the point I want to kind of piggyback off of this morning, if you will. That whatever we feed grows, and whatever we starve dies. And so we're going to look at that here in just a few minutes. Let me begin with a question. Why is it that our spirits can be so willing, but our flesh can be so weak? Why is it that our spirits can be so willing? We want to do the right thing. We want to do what's good. But at times, our fleshly side, our, our, our human side, if you will, maybe, uh, it, it gives in. It's weak at times. Craig Groeschel says that the reason that we're often so weak is because we're not bonded to that which makes us strong. Let me say it again. The reason that we're sometimes so weak in our spiritual lives is because we are not bonded to that which makes us strong. He gets this idea from Jesus. Jesus talks about this in James or John chapter 15 is it's that whole uh, uh, passage about the vine I'm the vine you are the branches and and it talks about our need to remain in God uh, about it's not just about convenience uh, 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 being connected to Jesus isn't just about when it's uh, you know we feel like it uh, but that there is this importance of bonding this importance of connecting this importance of remaining listen to John chapter 15 verses 4 through 5. These are Jesus' words. Remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, Jesus said, and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Maybe you remember that from an older translation, that instead of using remain in me, they use the word uh, abide in me. Abide in me as I abide in you. The word for remain or abide here is not a word that just says, you know, come do this once and get it over with and be gone with it. No, the word abide or remain here in the original language means to to remain stable or, or to remain fixed in a state. It, it's a continual thing. It's a continuing in place or in process in our lives. It's the idea that our relationship with Jesus isn't something that we're involved in only when it's convenient. That, that, that it's something that we live out in our lives. We're relating to Jesus. We're connected to Jesus. We're remaining, abiding, bonding to Jesus every single day of our lives. Not just on Sunday mornings, uh, during the Sunday school hour and the worship hour, and then we go home and do our own thing the rest of the week. It's not Jesus on Sunday and myself leading my life the rest of the week. No, no, it's Jesus every single day, abiding in him, living in him every single day. The image Jesus uses to describe the importance of our daily connection, this remaining, this, this bonding to, this, this abiding in, is this vi- image of the, the vine and the branches. Uh, you know, I, I, this is my second Sunday in a war- row where I'm talking about gardening, all right? I'm not a master gardener by any means. But, uh, but here recently, we've had some of these vines that, uh, uh, I don't even know what kind of vines you call them. They're just, I just call them vines. The, the green, what? Ivy, is it ivy? Okay, there you go. Kimberly helps me. It's ivy. We've got some ivy in our house, and I, I take it upon myself to make sure that ivy is watered, and it's lived for a very, very long time. Well, recently... I decided I was going to, since I was getting some other plants, I was going to plant some new ivy. And so uh, Kimberly's mom had told me how to do it. And, and, you know, so I cut it off the right place, put it in water, let it grow some roots. And, and now I've got it in a, in a pot uh, of good fresh soil and, and uh, it's growing, seems to be taking off. I, I, I think I'm, I'm earning an A in, in my, uh, my planting abilities, but uh, we'll see how long it lasts. 
But the thing about it is I, I planted this and I saw the roots growing deep into the soil. Uh, you know, they're, they're occasionally as I'm messing with these ivies, I realize there, there's, a, there's a leaf or a, or, or a stem from a leaf that has fallen off. And you know what happens to that leaf that falls off? It doesn't stay green. It slowly begins to turn yellow. And if it gets hidden in the back of the ivy where I don't see it, I'll find it later on and it will be shriveled and it will be brown and it will be because it's completely disconnected from the vine. Jesus wants us connected. Jesus wants to, to be connected to you. He, he, he wants you to be strong in the faith. But you cannot be strong in the faith unless you're connected to the vine. You've got to be connected to the vine. Are you bonding with him? Are you remaining in the Lord daily? Is your faith just something that you do when it's convenient? Or are you learning to abide and continually be in that place where you're walking with Jesus all the days of your life? So how do we do that? How do we, how do we practice abiding in our lives? Well, there's some wonderful practices we can do. And that's what I want to talk to us about this morning. These are ways that we, if you will, feed our spirit. What we feed grows, what we starve dies. How do we feed our spirit so that we grow in the Lord? Let me give you three things. Here's the first one. If you want to feed your spirit, you need to feed your spirit with prayer. Just like exercise makes you stronger and your muscles grow, so prayer is like a muscle. It must be exercised. Our faith must be exercised through the act of, of prayer. I, I uh, just started uh, running again. Uh, I did it for a while, and I stopped, and, and, uh, and, and a, a couple of things happened. One in particular was that uh, I noticed that my, my back was starting to, to give me some troubles again. Occasionally, my back will give me troubles. And so when I run, I not only run, but I also do some, some exercises. I pull out a mat, and I lay, and my, my, my kids think I'm goofy as I lay there doing these exercises on the floor in our den. But uh, I do that because the, the running and the, and the back exercises help to, to strengthen my back, because I know that I'm prone to, to my back going out. In fact, my back went out, uh, 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 maybe last year it was, when, uh, when I was sitting at the desk writing a sermon. All of a sudden, the back went, wow, and that is not a fun feeling at all. Uh, I didn't take workers' comp out on it, I'll tell you that. But, but uh, um, it, 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 I was on the ground. Venus was coming in from the, my secretary was coming in going, are you okay? And, oh, it was not fun at all. But, but it was because I'd let, I, I wasn't strengthening my back. I wasn't exercising like I should. And so I was weak, and I was prone to, this, this, this pain in, of, of having my back go out. You know, when we don't exercise our faith through prayer, then we are prone to being weak in our spiritual lives. We're weak and we're prone to the things that might be, bring pain in our lives, like giving in to sin and uh, the, that which comes with that. Let's listen to what Matthew says in uh, Matthew 26, 41. Matthew these, writes these words, Watch and pray. In fact, these are Jesus' words. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We need to exercise our faith through prayer. We do this after the example of Jesus Christ. When was Jesus at his weakest moment? It was when he was in the garden, before he was going to the cross, before his suffering, that he knew that he would endure. He was in that moment kneeling at the, at the, at the, in the garden, and it even says, it, so it's very graphic, I think it was in Luke, where it talks about he was sweating, even drops of blood. The stress was so much on him that, that he prayed in that moment, in that moment of weakness, God, take this cup from me, but not my will be done, your will be done. Where did Jesus go when he was feeling weak? He went to his heavenly Father in prayer. If you're feeling tempted, if you're feeling struggling with this, you need to be a praying person like all, all of us do. Remember, we talked a few weeks ago about the, the submission prayer, that we need to not only uh, to resist the devil and he will flee us, but before that part of the verse, it says um, uh, that, that we should submit ourselves to God, then resist the devil, and the devil will flee. Well, what is that submitting ourselves to God? Remember that prayer? God, I submit to you my mind. 
today may I think your thoughts, good thoughts. God, may I submit to you my eyes so that I only watch things that are good for my soul. God, I submit to you my ears. May I only listen to your truth and not lies. God, may I submit to you my hands, my feet, my life, my heart. May I submit to you at all. We need to be ready before we even get to that place of temptation. We need to be a praying people. We feed our spirits as we pray. Here's a second way we feed our spirits. We do that through God's word. Give us this day our daily bread. This is, this is a, 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 a the prayer of the, that Jesus taught us to pray. Uh, give us this day our, our daily bread. Well, who's our daily bread? That's Jesus. And who is Jesus? Jesus says, I am the word. He is logos. He is the word. That's what we need to be digging into. God's word every single day. That's how we overcome the struggle of sin and temptation in our lives is to be people who are grounded in God's word, not when it's just convenient for us, but a daily feeding upon, a daily feasting upon of God's word. Listen to what uh, King David says in Psalm 119, 9 through 11. He says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? Now that didn't, I, I don't think that's just limited to young folks, okay? That's for all of us to hear. How can a person stay on a path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all of my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Let me ask you a question. What's your Bible reading plan? Do you have a goal for your life? Are you just kind of coasting through it? And maybe you'll pick up a little word of God here and a little Bible there. Let me challenge you and encourage you to have a goal for your spiritual lives. A goal for what you're going to be reading this month or this quarter or this year. Some of y'all began this year when I gave the original challenge to read through the entire Bible. Some of y'all are doing that. I applaud you. That's wonderful. For others of you, that might be a little more than you want to take on. It may be a little bit overwhelming for you. Well, that doesn't mean you're out of the game, okay? Find maybe a book of the Bible that you've been interested in. Or maybe a book that you've had some verses that you really like. And say, all right, over the next month, I'm going to just live in this book. Maybe it's James. Maybe it's one of the Gospels. And so for that next month, you just read through it at a slow pace. Or how, how many ever verses you want every day when you get up in the morning or before you go to bed at night. Just take a little bit and just let it, let it dwell within you as you read it and reread it. And when you get through with that book, if it's within that month, great. If it takes you two months, that's great. But just sit there and be with God's Word and let it speak to your heart. There's all kinds of different things out there. We've got upper room devotionals. They come with a little scripture passage every day. You can read that and meditate on that scripture. Uh, you can get them part of a, a Bible study. You could, you, you could uh, um, use the YouVersion app that I've talked about before. They've got all kinds of different Bible reading plans so that every day it will remind you on your phone read this passage and you check it off and you've read that passage and they even have topical whatever it is just spend some time with God and his word we don't read the Bible strictly for information we as believers in Jesus Christ are to read the Bible for transformation because you some of us say you know what I've read through the Bible or I've already read the Gospels I don't need to spend any time there or, I already read Romans or whatever no, no, no. If it's all about information, then we can just check off our list. But it's not for just information. It's for transformation. So that's what I love about this Word of God that is living and active. I can read the same passage at, at, at ten different times, at ten different periods of my life, and it's saying the same truth, but it's speaking to where I am in that moment at that given time. I, I've done this in Bible studies where I have everybody read the same psalm. And then I say, okay, what stood out to you? 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 It may be 10 different things for those 10 different people. Because God's word is living and active and speaking to us where we are. It's not changing to fit us, but it's speaking to us where we are. You, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I heard somebody say one time, and I can't, I can't remember where uh, I heard it, but they said, eat this book I'm not talking about physically because that would taste pretty bad but digest this in your soul in your spirit whether you read three chapters a day ten chapters a day or a verse a day read it regularly 
feed your soul. You know, Jesus in the wilderness, this is what we started this whole Lenten season with. We talked about Jesus being in the wilderness. And, and, and Jesus himself uh, uh, showed us this model for how to fight temptation, how to fight struggle in our lives. Because when he was tempted by the devil every single time, he responded not with some catchphrase he read on Facebook, but he read, he responded with the word of God. The devil came to him and said, hey, turn these stones to bread. You've been fasting for a long time. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. The devil took him to a, the temple to the highest point and said, hey, if you throw yourself down, the, the Old Testament says that you're going to be cared for and they're not going to let you bruise a, a, a bone. So why don't you throw yourself down? And Jesus said, no, no. The Bible says you do not tempt. You do not put, the God, you not put God to the test. He took him to the highest point in the world. He showed them all the kingdoms and said, if you'll just bow down and worship me, I will give all these things to you. And Jesus said, it is written, worship and serve the Lord your God. If you want to be ready to face temptation in your life, get the word of God in your life. Here's the third one, the final one for feeding our souls. And that is feed your spirit with the right people. We need to be in prayer. We need to feed our soul, our spirits with the prayer. We need to feed our spirits with God's word. But we also need to feed our spirits with the right people. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 through 34. It says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning. Now, I would think that most of all of our friends are fairly good people. But there are times when we can be around people that, that uh, maybe they have that overly critical spirit or their overly negative spirit. Or maybe, maybe we're around somebody that we see that that's just a gossiper you know they're just always talking about somebody whether they know it's true or not and, and, and they're you know or maybe we're being around there's all kinds of of negative things that will just eat us away and we don't have to be around them we need to surround ourselves with people that are going to encourage us and build us up not people that are going to talk behind our back and gossip about us. Because if they'll gossip about someone else in front of you, they will gossip behind your back when you're not around. Who are you hanging out with? Who are you spending your time with? Are you spending time with brothers and sisters that are going to build you up and encourage you, surround you with love and, and, and grace and, 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 and be the kind of people you need to have around you? Now, I realize you work with people, and, and there's people around, and you're not going to always be able to control all that kind of stuff. But, but you can control some of that. Are you going to place yourself around people who are going to build you up, or are you just going to keep listening to all that kind of stuff? Because guess what? When you start keep listening to all that kind of stuff, and you have these bad influences around you, you're slowly going to become just like them. We talked about that a while back. We talk about toxic influences. Psalm 1, 1 through 3 says this, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners, take, uh, the way sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord who meditates on his law day and night. This person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither, whether... Whatever they do prospers. What you feed grows. What you deny dies. What are you feeding your spirit with, folks? If you want to learn to live the victorious life, you want to learn to live a life of, uh, of, of being an overcomer, then be connected to the things that feed your spirit the word of God, prayer, and the right people around you. Be the person God has called you to be. Do the things that God has called you to do. And as you do, you will be that one who remains in him as he remains in you, and who abides in, with you as you abide with him. We don't have to live weak lives. We can exercise our faith through prayer and scripture reading and 
right relationships. And as we do, we can be blessed. And so we can in turn be a blessing to others. Amen.